Hello and welcome, Pastor John here. Um, today we're going to be looking at the book of Mika in our series, um, Going Through the Bible. So please open your Bibles, go to Mika, Micah chapter 7, verses 7 to 9. That's Mika chapter 7, verses 7 to 9. And we read... As for me, I look to the Lord for help. I wait confidently for God to save me, and my God will certainly hear me. Do not gloat over me, my enemies, for though I fall, I will rise again. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. I will be patient as the Lord punishes me, for I have sinned against him. But after that, he will take up my case and give me justice for all I have suffered from my enemies. The Lord will bring me into the light and I will see his righteousness. God bless reading of his word. Waiting patiently on God. The title for our message today, Waiting Patiently on God. So the background here is the prophet Micah is an Old Testament prophet. He's active between 760 to 686 B.C. And he's proclaiming divine judgment on Israel and Judah for engaging in idolatry. So, if you follow along, idolatry is one of the themes that um, God has to deal with and is speaking through his prophets um, to warn the people to turn away from idolatry and turn back to him. So, uh, important is that, uh, nevertheless, God promises justice and mercy to all who turn away from idols back to God. So that is God's promise of justice and mercy. And so there's a contrast here in this passage we just we just read between belief and unbelief. So the topic is that God helps us to overcome challenges, yet waiting on him often is his requirement. And we don't like that. We don't like to wait, don't we? We, we want things right now often, and it may be outside of God's will, but waiting on God often is God's requirement. So as we look through the verses, verses 1 to 7 is basically a summary um, of Micah lamenting over the Israelites uh, coming fall. Right, God's judgment is coming, and Micah, uh, God reveals it to Micah. Um, and so that the entire passage is um, uh, from, from verse 1 to 7 about the Israelites coming judgment. In verse 7, however, um, God provides hope that is for all who cling to God. Right? We're called to cling to God then, as, then and now. And in verse 8, God offers hope for the future. And um, following then in verse 9, um, the prophet Micah understands how God operates. So waiting patiently, um, he, as he does, God shapes and molds him. Uh, and why? Because Micah acknowledges his sin and his sinful position before God. So Micah holds firm to faith in God's um, ultimate sovereignty and justice and timing. So what can you learn here? Or what can you and I, what can all of us as believers learn here? So how does waiting patiently on God, like Micah, apply to you and me? So God expects us to look to him for help. God hears us and answers in his own perfect plan, purpose, and timing. And God will bring about his justice. He will, God will judge all evil, and therefore he calls us to wait on him. That's hard. That's not easy to do. It's challenging for us as believers, right? But it is the best way at times, especially in times of crisis. And so here's a big one. We have God's uh, promise um, as believers. Jesus sanctifies us as his children. So helps us become more like him as we believe in Christ. So we read in Hebrews chapter 12, if you want to read along, turn to the chapter book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 5 to 6. We read, And have you forgotten 
the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children. He said, my child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline and don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. God bless you in his word. So to sum it up in a way, um, this punishing is a form of pruning. Jesus Christ prunes us. Right? He's helping us as Christians to imitate him and become more like him. Oh, this is often a, a slow and challenging process, but it's an ongoing process until he calls us home or returns the second time, whenever that is. We don't know, the Bible doesn't tell us. So in the meantime, we've got Jesus' own encouragement as he's pruning and shaping us as we um, wait uh, patiently. In John 15, verses 1 to 2, Jesus tells us, I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so they will produce even more. God bless the reading of his word. So that's our pruning, our sanctification, and uh, Jesus does it all. Uh, he's the author and perfecter of our faith. May God bless you and keep you. Amen.